So I thought I'd show you a little update, something interesting on some of the newer Yamahas that have the ride system. Now, I don't know if this is something that's happening at the dealerships, at the factories, if it's just a poor design, but we've had several of these recently that came in with chafed wires right at the steering column. One caused a no start where it wouldn't even wake up the ECU unless you shook stuff around. The other one is causing a code 153, which is related to the reverse trigger on the left handle. So let me show you what's going on and what you have to do in order to find if this is your problem. Down in here, now this is a TR1 equipped machine, obviously. Down in here, there is all the connectors. You can see the gray connector right here that I've disconnected. That's for the ride handle on the left handlebar. And I've disconnected that so that I could see this is the problem and decided to make this video because this is starting to be very common. But these wires are all of your handlebar controls. So that bundle has your start stop button, your kill switch, your throttle, your ride uh, lever. It's got all of the controls from your handlebars come to this point right here. So for reference, you know, look at where the engine is, everything. It is right up here. That's where everything comes to. So if it's any of the controls on your handlebars that are having a problem, they all come to right here. Now I've unplugged that one because I've removed the handlebar pad and all of the plastics off of the right hand side of the machine. All of the plastics have been taken off from the glove box forward so that we can get up in here. We have this little rubber boot that normally has a zip tie on it and wires and stuff all come through here and up in there you can see where the light comes through they come down through the steering column let me show you the problem so right where these come through the steering column it chafes the wires so we're gonna have to cut this sheathing back splice this in and put some heat shrink and stuff over this that's going to be a bit more durable than this flimsy little coating that they've got on here. So we're going to cut this open and show you what's going on inside and then we'll go from there. Okay so with our sheathing split open I just took a razor blade and split that open and you can see immediately right here this black with a white stripe. Look at all the bare copper that's exposed and actually it is completely severed. These other four wires appear to be fine but you can see that all of them have this kink where they have been pinched. We're gonna solder this wire back together, put it back in, make sure that it's routed in a way where it's not getting pinched, and put some good heavy duty heat shrink over that. So in order to prevent this happening again, because we've got these two things that move and are kind of the stops, and they stop in both directions, up here and down here, and the same on the other side, I've taken a zip tie and routed the wires down to the bottom where they won't get pinched in either of those because they stay away from it. So hopefully that ends up helping and preventing this being a recurring problem. Everything's all back together now. Now, unless you have a scan tool, you may need to do a few start stop cycles in order to clear that code. So just put your lanyard on, start the machine up, Make sure it's going into forward, reverse, everything. It's going to complain, beep, check engine light. Run it five seconds, pull your lanyard out, let the dash power down, everything shut off. Give it, you know, five minutes if you need to. Put your lanyard back on, fire it back up. It's probably still going to complain and beep and check engine light at you. Just make sure it goes into reverse, forward, everything fine. Five seconds, pull the lanyard out. Wait five minutes for everything to power down plug it back in, start it back up, and the code should be gone. So it will still be a historical code, which you could see with a scan tool, but it won't ever cause problems again unless the wire wears through again or something else goes wrong. It won't put you in limp mode or things of that nature after you've done that sequence to clear the code. So hopefully this has been helpful to you. If you've got a code 153, a no start, or something related to the handlebar controls on your 
basically brand new Yamaha EX, VX, probably even the FX models are affected by this, depending on how it's been set up at the factory. So hopefully it's been helpful to you. Thanks for watching.